Well, I told you that uh, I'd send you guys a video as soon as I got this thing looking like something. And it's amazing when you design something on paper and get the parts all together, put it together and find out that just because it looks good on paper don't mean it's gonna function the way you think it should function and um there's a lot of always bugs to work out and i and i i think that's how it is developing anything um especially something like this well i got it looking like something uh, after wanting to throw this damn thing out the window um uh yeah i it's a lot but this big blob you see sticking out here, that's a bunch of capacitors um, with two rectifying diodes. They're one-way valves. Basically, this is what it's called. And it doubles the voltage and it rectifies. Takes AC, turns it to DC. Bumps my voltage up. I power this with my Variac transformer, which I've modified, of course. I've added an extra fuse inside to protect the output, protect the load. I run this baby all the way up to maximum, 150 volts. AC gets rectified. 120 gets rectified into 170 because um, you have to imagine it, it's, it's the RMS uh, that's measured when you're measuring AC and DC is based off of your peaks, uh, the peak of the waveform, instead of any, any kind of an average. Uh, the controller, which I have just now freshly charged, is uh, a simple circuit. It's a really easy to build. You can find the plans for this anywhere. It was super easy. Uh, I just tacked it together. Uh, it's uh, two 555 timers and um, uh, a dang... Uh, dang old uh, LM393 uh, with a fiber optic uh, infrared admi emitter and uh, lithium battery pack. It's cheap, but you know what? I wasn't going to point. I'll get there. Um, it, well, what I can do with this already is... is uh, more than I'd hoped for. So I had to make a lot of adjustments. I mean, as far as adjusting the the capacitance, uh, AKA also known as the top load of the coil. This is a baby food lid. This is a plate. This lid's a plate. This is a toroid. This big donut, the shape is called a toroid. This distance, this gap between the baby food lid and this holds charge. It actually is adding capacitance. So this is just like a capacitor. There's one on each end. I had to adjust a lot of things. I have other rods here so that I could make these balls higher, lower, by adjusting, trying every which combination of, um, of possible setups, finally I've gotten to a place that I, I, I'm willing to, to take a video and show. Inside here, I've added a little, you see it looks like a little washer in there? After the nut, this side of the nut, you'll see it's a little, a little plate on each end. That I've added in there. That's another. That's another. Uh, it's called top load. It adds capacitance to the entire coil. This is called a bipolar Tesla coil. It it's got two poles, and it's fed in the center. This is the primary coil here. The primary I initially designed, initially had in mind, was much thinner wire, and it was only two wraps. Now I've put three wraps of the fattest, uh, um, most stranded, I mean, the very, very fine strands 
in this wire. It's probably got a thousand hairs in each one of these. This is number 12. Silicone insulated wire on top of the coil. There's also one loop of just really simple wire. Now I, I don't know if it's going to focus for you to even be able to see it. But it's in there. That is a feedback loop. It's basically an antenna that reads what the secondary coil, the big red horizontal coil here, is oscillating at. And it sends the frequency, the, the resonant frequency of this coil is picked up by this antenna. It's called a feedback loop, feedback winding. That is processed by my gate driver circuitry. This right here is a CD74-132. And I got two TC-4422s. These two TC-4422s can put out... Damn it, I dropped an ash in there. I'm going to have to vacuum the whole thing out. Uh, 9 amps. Each one of those little chips there can put out 9 amps. And each uh, each one drives one of these... Uh, these are the IGBTs. Big transistors is what they basically are. Each one drives one of these. Okay, this is my handmade... Looks like a piece of candy called a gate drive transformer. So the signal from the antenna comes in these white wires right here into this big chip. This big chip's ran off of 5 volts pulled off of a regulator that comes off the main transformer here. I got two regulators. One here is 15 volts. One here is 5 volts. The 5 volts goes to the big chip. This is the logic chip that does the thinking. It sends the pulsed signal to my two driver chips alternating. Boom, 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 boom. They, they make the flip-flop and they can sync and source 9 amps and pump it straight into each one of those. Boom, 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 boom. These are capacitors in here. Well, I also needed to add another capacitor. I soldered it onto the bottom of the whole unit. I ain't going to be able to put a bottom on this damn thing. Look at that. I have all the panels. But to get it adjusted to where I needed it to be, I had to put another one down there. I don't know how I'm going to stuff all of this in there. I'm going to have to rebuild the case. That's just the, the nature of this beast. All right. Um, yeah, so I went from running on one, uh, one regular old 120. I decided to install and I took out the full wave rectifier chip. There's a chip that has basically, it's simple, four diodes in it. It's called a full bridge rectifier. You take AC and it doesn't give you half the wave. It rectifies the full wave and gives you all the power. This does the same thing, but instead of using four diodes, it uses two capacitors, at least two, and two diodes. And it doubles the voltage and rectifies the AC into DC at the same time. Now, I've added extra capacitors because you need capacitance. These capacitors, along with these capacitors here, form what's called the bus capacitance. That's the main power rail capacitance. Because every pulse that has to be pumped into one of these has to be sourced. So it's like a, an immediate draw. And if you don't have enough capacitance, you're going to drain your capacitors so much that they're not going to be able to recharge enough. They're not going to have enough capacity that they're going to not be able to recharge enough to give you the full power punch for the next pulse. And we're talking thousands of pulses a second here. Kilohertz worth of, I mean, very fast. This thing is just fucking screams, and that's what I wanted it to do. Very, very fast switching. It's, in, it's insane. I got two 24 volt fans blowing on that heat sink there, and believe me, you need it because I'm pumping some fucking juice. Over 800 amps flows through this circuit. So, as I said, this is my Variac. I can set it to 120 volts. 
That would be doubled, 170 times two. I run it at 150, 150 times two. Over 300 volts goes in um, to this unit. Shocker coils. This is the Infinerex core design. That's what I'm calling it. And, uh, well, are you ready for a demonstration? All right. So we come to the Variac. Make sure she's turned all the way down. Flip it on. We're reading zeros. Twist the knob. You'll see a blue LED come on inside the box the fans will kick on about 50 volts a little bit more you'll hear them in a second now we're at 120 going all the way up to 150 148 give or take maxed out all right now i take the control box There's the power plug. It's just an actually it's a plug to the fiber optic cable. The emitter for this cable for this system is infrared. You can't see the light. It's heat is all it is. It's an infrared light laser pulse. And it can pulse very, very fast. This is the controller. You use fiber optic to give yourself distance away from this motherfucker so you don't get shocked. Fiber optic does not conduct electricity. Therefore, the insanely strong magnetic field that's created around this thing, let alone any stray arcs or lightning bolts that come off of it, wire, run back to me and fry my ass. And it won't interfere with the signal that I'm trying to send to the coil. If you use a regular wire to send a signal to that coil with that much energy going on there, the magnetic field would fuck it all up. It would hiss and it would be all scrambled. That's why we use fiber optics for this type of shit. All right. So the fans are running. She's cool. Now I got two switches here. I got two different modes. I can hook uh, a headphone auxiliary cord into this jack right here and actually play square wave music with this arc through this coil because of this box here. It's very simple uh, relatively to, to do that. It won't play fancy music like I say. I... I can build a fancier one of these and I can play a fucking song and make you want to cry, but as it is, it's pretty damn cool. I'm not going to play any music on this video, but, okay, so this knob, this is your power. This is your pulse width. This is how wide every pulse of energy going out into that red coil, which oscillates into the primary that's how wide the pulse is the wider the pulse the bigger the now this one is your beats per minute this is how fast your pulses are coming at you and i haven't even measured uh this coil's maximum speed i let you hear it the other day on the phone uh but that was weak sauce compared to the way I got it now. I've already been through some transistors since then. I mean, I've had shit blow up, testing, working through problems. But I think I'm almost about satisfied. Okay, so switch on number one. Got the blue light. Give it just a little bit of throttle. Switch on number two.